Fern sneaks into a regional and shows the world that, well, 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 guess who's back? Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. The Honduras regional breakdown here is actually, man, this is a tell of absolute gold because I love seeing these breakdowns that are this nice. Straight off the bat, you see that you had double math mech being your highest represented deck in the top cut. Yes. Not tier, not sprite. That is good to see. All right. I love when regionals have their fair share of diversity. That is good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We then have the regional winner, which was uh was Burn. You know, Cauldron of the Old Man, you know, generic shenanigans through Mystic Mind, you know, goes in match, rivalry, floodgating your opponent out of the game so they really can't capitalize and play any sort of uh, game plan against you. I like the fact that this deck is functioning and gaining a little bit more momentum, but I can't help but think that because of the way the format is right now is why this deck is starting to gain huge, huge favor here. We also had our branded Eldritch deck in Top Cut. Well, that's good to see. We also had one Exosister deck. Now, to be honest with you, um, Exosister has kind of let me down a little bit as of late, but to finally see that we're getting some ground with this is good stuff, all right? Um, I feel like Exosister kind of takes a little bit more skill curve out here to kind of grind out the game, so that's good. All right, we also had a Despia deck. I have not seen, like, pure Despia do anything other than top 32s at regionals for a while. Yeah, I understand that you can implement, you know, the tier package into the deck and find success with that particular build. But to be honest with you, it just kind of feels like overall that you could do much more, but you're just kind of choosing not to. That's how I view Despia right now. And then we had the one tier and the one sprite. So that's pretty, pretty generic. All right, we're going to pass on over to top 16 deck list. All right, the first deck we're going to be looking at here is Burn. Of course, you've got the full Ojama package in here. And we're actually pulling a page out of the book here where we're going back to ancient Yu-Gi-Oh, where we're dusting off the magic drains. Holy moly. We've also got unending nightmares in here. So whatever shenanigans that I feel like the opponent's trying to do, this deck feels very, very counter um, built to handle any real sort of situation you might come across. Good stuff. Second place here was actually Eldlich, or excuse me, yeah, Eldlich with our Despia good stuff package in it. So, Golden Land Forever in here. We have TC Boo, Gozen, and Rivalry. So we're playing two of each of the Floodgates to ensure game. We have the Inspector Borders in the side deck as well as cards that we can access to kind of detour any real problems that the opponent might actually put at us. Honestly, in terms of deck build, this feels pretty standard, honestly. Next up here, we have our Exosister list. Wow, Exosister made it all the way to third place here. Uh, we are playing the one of the card that allows you to jam out specific named cards from the opponent. We are main decking the Dimension Shifter. I did see recently that a list did show up that was not playing Dimension Shifter. I feel like not playing Dimension Shifter can be a little bit harmful at the end of the day. Uh, we're also playing Lina down here as a link out target. That's kind of cute. Shout out to Ultimate Slayer and Talents in the side deck. All right, fourth place here is our tier list. So we are playing Very Tale Snow. You wouldn't catch me not playing this without Fairy Tale Snow. I see we also have Curious with no Griffin in here. Okay, so we're just making Topological Bomber Dragon or Zero Boros as our big climb up targets to disrupt the opponent. I also see we're doing a little Rite of Armesia package in here as well. We're trying to get really saucy in terms of these deck builds with some of the cool ideas. All right, I'll take it. Next up here is our first Math Mech deck, making fifth place here. Now, we are playing one of the uh, Ghost Sisters next to the Effect Failure there, which is an interesting tech choice, I suppose. Uh, one equation with one super factorial, I feel like is fine. Uh, update Jammer, no update Jammer, Transco Tucker, TK? Interesting, we're doing Avermax though. So, honestly, outside of that, I feel like this feels a little bit more standardized here. Uh, sixth place here is our next Math Mech deck. Uh, you have the two of the trap, the one equation, which is fine. 
I see trans go down there. They are also playing the final Sigma. I know a lot of people are looking at certain lists that we posted recently, and they're like, no final Sigma, you need it. No, uh, other lists have proven to me that you don't actually need final Sigma in order to have success, all right? Um, it just comes down to the overall deck build, and if you can grind out without it, you're fine. Seventh place here is our sprite deck. Okay. So we are playing Smashers with well, just one Smashers. I know recently people have been trying to get saucy with like two and then siding one more. Uh, we also have double Econ in the main deck. It's fine. We're also main decking triple super polymerization. Okay, so Sprite has actually started to adapt towards the super poly mentality as well, where if your opponent starts to make some sort of board that looks intimidating, you can break it with relative ease. Like, that's good to see. All right, and then eighth place here was our Despia deck here. Uh, we are playing the Branded Trap card, which is actually kind of nice to see because I haven't seen a lot of builds trying that out. Um, no Tier 7 here. We are doing the one McCareer with Triple or Darkness, which is fine. We're also playing one Dark Ruler no more. That's kind of tacked out, actually. I kind of like that choice. And, of course, you see, like, we're doing the Fright for Patchwork stuff that we've been doing for most of the format. I feel like that's, like, the way to go about this deck for uh, those little innovations. Next up here is, holy moly, is this 60 card sprite? What in the world? You have the whole Nimble package in here, you got Deep Sea Divas, you have Hop Ear Squadrons to make the Heralds during the opponent's turn, you have White Howlings down in the side deck to detour the opponent. This deck is a menace to me, man. Like, the amount of comboing that you should be able to do with this build is crazy. 10th place here is another sprite deck with Cap Shell. Holy crap, I have not seen Cap Shell all format. Oh my gosh, I know we talked about Cap Shell at the beginning of its life here, but to finally see somebody actually pull it off, I'll clap for that. That is awesome, man. Um, different dimension grounds down in the side deck as well. You, I like to see that. But honestly, outside of that, this is one of the coolest innovative builds for this deck I've seen to date. Next up here is a danger tier list with a rocket package. What? So we're playing quick launch for rocket tracer. I guess technically that does put an extra level four on the body or on the field so that you could technically exceed with. That's kind of interesting. I see we also have Garuda and stuff to step through as well. We have the Super Polys in the main deck, and we're actually main decking even these so that we could break some boards. That is uh, some interesting stuff. Next up here is another Sprite deck. Man, all of our Sprite players got locked down into top 16. I see that this build feels a little bit more standard. Uh, you have Ghost Ogres in the main deck, so you can dodge the Almirage. I think a lot of people still are playing Almirage, but I think it is still one of the pieces that if you're not playing it, you're kind of crazy. Um, I don't really see anything too crazy about this, man. Like I said, Sprite decks feel very, very standard in terms of the things that they uh, are built with. Next up is Sun Avalon. Oh my gosh, with the Rika stuff. Okay, so Plant Good stuff actually ended up taking off here. I don't see, there's nothing too crazy in the monster lineup. I know a few people like playing less of the Loki seed um, just because um, once you reduce your numbers for the seed, it ends up being a less of a dead draw, which, once again, I you take your poison with that particular pick, but, all right, double Mystic Mine in the main deck. Hmm, <laughs> you love to see it. Next up here is another Eldritch list here. I see that we are main decking anti-scam fragrances as well. I still do think that anti-spell fragrance it just allows you to steal some games that you normally wouldn't get the chance to actually win. And I think that that's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. Having basically anti-scam fragrance acting as an additional skill drain in certain matchups is kind of free real estate at the end of the day. So not too bad, all right? Next up here is Prada Plant, Phantom Knights, with Nyan Nyan. Okay, so we are actually hard playing the Prada Plant package to get to the Fusion Destiny. When was the last time that you saw somebody out here trying the Prada Plant package? I'll give you an answer. It was a long time ago, man. So many people kind of just rejected the concept and the notion of trying that, but I like it. Not bad. And last but not least was Sky Striker. Sky Striker ran it all the way back here 
to still get the chance to perform and do well. What a regional, everybody. Um, a lot of diversity here, a lot of cool ideas. You really do love to see it. So please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about the Honduras Regional Breakdown. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.